Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shneda, and today I'm going to be doing a sort of part two to a video that I recently posted called Five Things Nobody Tells You About Applying to College. So today I'm going to be reading all of the essays that I wrote for my NYU application. If you guys don't know already, I'm going to be attending NYU Tisch for recorded music this fall. And I wanted to share these essays with you guys because I think it's so important for you to understand how to write a strong essay. And it's one of the main ways that you can show admissions counselors what kind of person you are and what your goals are. So before we get started on the topic of essays, I know a lot of you guys are writing your finals or writing lots of essays for your online classes and I wanted to show you guys this really cool resource I've been using called Bartleby. Bartleby is an online homework resource that helps students with their homework and one of the resources they have is called Bartleby Write where you can submit your essays and have Bartleby proofread them for spelling, grammar, and punctuation and it also gives you suggestions on how you can improve your writing They'll also help you with citations if you're doing a research paper and they have this amazing program that predicts what grade you'll get on that essay. So I've been using Bartleby Write for a lot of my classes and it's just been really helpful. If you're having trouble with your homework, they also have a resource called Bartleby Learn where you can ask professionals questions that you have about your homework and they'll get back to you within an hour. The service works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so if you're like me and some of your teachers aren't responsive to their emails, you can just go to Bartleby Learn, ask your question, and they'll explain everything really clearly for you. Right now, you can go to the links in my description box below and get 10 free questions every month until the end of June, or you can use my code. And you can also try Bartleby Write for free by clicking the link. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. So the first essay that I'm going to be reading for you guys is my Common App essay. I applied for six schools, but I only used the Common App for three of them, and this is the essay that I submitted to all three of those schools. The prompt that I chose was, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? The title of my essay is Gongs, Sunrises, and Aesthetics. Hanging on the wall next to my window is a gouache painting of a purple hashtag that I made in 11th grade. The piece is called Octothorpe. It's my depiction of how the symbol's meaning has changed over time and the power that the hashtag has in our modern society. Arguably, the piece could have been painted by a preschooler, but I'm very fond of it. It's also an example of contemporary art. When I was 12 years old, my parents took me to the Musée d'Art Contemporain in Montreal. That was where I first fell in love with contemporary art. I remember vividly seeing Claude Toussignon's Gong 64, which features a large circular canvas painted with vibrant colors to create perfect circles that get larger as you get closer to the edge of the canvas. To this day, Gong 64 is still one of my favorite contemporary art pieces for two reasons. First, it visualizes the way sound travels when a gong is struck. And second, the continuity of the circles means that the painting never truly ends. This painting perfectly takes the concept of transforming something ordinary, like the sound of a gong, to induce new reactions in the observer. The circular nature of the painting could also represent the circulation of ideas between people. Artists, such as myself, are constantly inspiring and being inspired by other artists around us. Creativity does not happen in solitude. Since contemporary art is often abstract, it is up to the observer to use their imagination to complete the piece. This interaction between the artists, through their art, and the observer is why I love exploring contemporary art. When I'm trying to understand the way contemporary artists look at the world, I turn to nature. Contemporary artists are inspired by the world around them, and by understanding my surroundings, I can create my own unique artworks. Often, seemingly ordinary objects in nature, such as the sun, can surprise us when we see it from a different perspective. The first time I watched the sunrise on a beach was in Valencia this past summer. It was 5 a.m. as my friends and I laid on the soft, still sand waiting for the sky to turn purple. 
It felt like forever until dawn, but there was something about the calmness of the waves and the quiet morning that made me feel serene. When you go to a concert, you applaud at the end of the performance because you feel moved by what you heard. For me, the beauty of the sun's pink silhouette above the sparkling horizon was so overwhelming that I couldn't resist the urge to applaud. Even though the sun came up as it did every morning, I felt like time had stopped at that moment. I feel the same way when I look at Gong 64, Eternal. But Gong 64 is only one of a handful of contemporary artworks that I've learned to love. From Damien Hirst's exploration of fatality through preserved animals to Kazimir Malvik's aesthetically pleasing white on white, every artist I encounter makes me question our knowledge of the world and the role of art. Aristotle once said that mimesis allows us to purge our negative emotions in a controlled environment. That is the core of contemporary art, depicting emotions that we might not be able to see in other forms of art. Just like the human imagination, art is limitless. But in order to understand it, we are challenged to reflect deeply on the meaning of the work and our own conscience. This exploration is what fascinates me. Whenever I observe or create art, I am not afraid of pushing the boundaries of my own thinking, and these experiences are what make me feel limitless, just as I did when I witnessed the sunrise on the coast of Valencia. So for the NYU application, besides the Common App essay, you also need to write one other prompt that NYU gives you specifically. And this is pretty common for most schools that you apply to, and the question is about why you want to attend that school and this is what I wrote for it. As an artist whose goal is to promote equal representation and cultural diversity, being at NYU would allow me to collaborate with a wide range of people from many different backgrounds as well as allow me to share my own perspective. The main factors that attract me to NYU are the strong liberal arts education, the opportunity to work with industry professionals, and be immersed in a culturally rich community. I am applying to the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music and the Steinhardt Music Technology Program because both of these programs incorporate music production and new technologies and challenges students to be global leaders in innovation. So when I was writing this essay, I originally planned on applying to two programs at NYU, but after I submitted my application, I realized that I could actually only apply for one program. A liberal arts education is important to me because I am interested in engaging with new and unfamiliar ideas. I would love to learn from and collaborate with NYU's strong philosophy, computer science, and game design faculty. I would be open to taking a minor or double major in these areas of study. If I am accepted into NYU Tisch for recorded music, I would like to collaborate with students from the Game Center to create and compose music for a video game. The holistic curriculum of the Clive Davis Institute really suits me because I am a very multifaceted person with many interests and skills in music. I have been playing and composing music from a very young age, and I'm always looking for opportunities to learn more and push my creative boundaries. Rimu, which is short for recorded music, is the perfect place for me because I would be able to learn a wide range of skills that will distinguish me from other musicians in the field. The creative entrepreneurship approach that this program offers is unique and fits me because I am self-driven, open-minded, and strong. Both Rimu and the Steinhardt Music Technology program offers amazing opportunities for hands-on learning and study abroad. I love traveling and learning how to navigate a new environment, so to have the opportunity to study in Europe would be incredible. Being surrounded by many forward thinkers at NYU, like myself, would be a great way for me to learn not only in the classroom, but also outside of it. I believe NYU will teach me valuable skills that will allow me to develop my career and revolutionize the music industry. So those two essays were the ones I submitted for my Common App, but for my specific program, we had to write a few more essays. Um, one of them was a statement of intent and then the other one was a critical essay with a prompt that they gave. So I'm gonna read the statement of intent first. When people ask me what genre of music I play, I always say a mix of everything. Although I am a classically trained pianist, I love experimenting with pop, jazz, indie, R&B, funk, acoustic folk, EDM, and traditional Chinese music. I don't feel confined by any one genre because my curiosity to try new things drives me to combine and merge different genres to create my own sound. 
My open-mindedness would be an asset for me at the Clive Davis Institute because the holistic curriculum would allow me to explore a variety of skills and techniques, inform me of the vast musical world, and make me a stronger, well-rounded musician. I am applying to the Clive Davis Institute as a technology producer and executive entrepreneur because I believe that the future of the music industry lies in technology. The Clive Davis Institute not only embraces this, but also prepares its students for this revolution. My love for learning and curiosity to try everything is a strength that allows me to not settle on any particular focus. I see myself as all seven types of entrepreneurs highlighted in the program. I am a self-managed independent artist, a music blogger, a performer, a songwriter, a producer, a computer scientist, and the founder of a not-for-profit youth music festival. All of these roles define who I am as a musician and leader in the community, and I hope to continue to be a leader at NYU and in the wider music industry. I spent the first 14 years of my musical career as a classical pianist, and it has really helped me build a solid foundation for my music making. I practice piano for four to five hours a day, which has taught me resilience and attention to detail. I don't practice four to five hours anymore, unfortunately. On top of that, I'm still able to balance my time with ensemble rehearsals, producing and composing my own music, playing gigs, and schoolwork. Performing is a part of my identity. Since the age of five, I've performed at countless music competitions, festivals, galas, and events, including at Carnegie Hall in New York City and Roy Thompson Hall in Toronto. Two years ago, I began composing and writing songs. I taught myself how to produce music through YouTube videos, attending local workshops, and beat making sessions. Songwriting and production allow me to create music that represents my identity and thoughts. My favorite part of the production process is experimenting with the endless possibilities of synth design to create different quirky sounds. Recently, I began experimenting with live looping on the rolly blocks. The versatility of electronic digital instruments fascinates me and I hope to work with more new instruments and eventually build my own at the Clive Davis Institute. I believe that opportunities don't wait for you, but rather you have to seek them yourself. Booking and managing my own gigs has taught me perseverance and persistence. In the next four years, I hope to focus a lot more on production and sound engineering because I know that there is so much for me to learn and I could improve much more with the right tools, resources, and mentors that the Clive Davis Institute provides. Studying at NYU would allow me to develop entrepreneurial and production skills through internships at top companies in the New York metropolitan area, as well as attending master classes by visiting professionals. My goal is to develop technology by using artificial intelligence and machine learning to create a tool that will change the way musicians approach music making. Just as synthesizers and drum machines were just as synthesizers and drum machines were revolutionary, I think artificial intelligence is a turning point in music technology. Projects such as Magenta at Google and Ava fascinate me, and I would love to work with engineers to create similar technologies. The study abroad program in Berlin would allow me to deep dive into emerging music technology and explore the newest and most recent strides in the field, while also immersing myself in a new environment and explore a new culture as well as learn to speak German. As the principal pianist for the Toronto Youth Wind Orchestra and the co-head of my school's senior and chamber choirs, I love being involved in music ensembles, which I plan on continuing at NYU by auditioning for the Women's Choir, NYU and Harmonics, and the University Concert Band. Additionally, I am a strong advocate for equal gender and racial representation in STEAM. The music production industry is so male-dominated, with women making up only about 2% of the music industry, and as an Asian woman, I want to change that. I'm so inspired by the female entrepreneurs that have graduated from NYU, such as Maggie Rogers, Fletcher, Aaron Tonkin, and Phoebe Ryan. I want to raise awareness about gender equality issues in the music industry within the NYU community and represent the next generation of female producers and engineers as an NYU alumnus. Equal representation in all industries is so important for the next generation of girls to see, and since I'm not afraid to speak up for what I believe in and what I represent, I believe I can share my stories to inspire others. Whew, that was long. <laughs>
Okay, this is the last one. This is the critical essay. And basically for the Clive Davis application, we have to make a playlist of 10 songs that we would bring to space. The prompt is to write about one of those songs that you picked on your playlist. And I decided to write about Money by Leto, who is one of my absolute favorite producers and songwriters. Money is one of my favorite songs by Leto because it's bold, hard-hitting, and unlike his most recent albums, IOU 1 and 2, I like that it is reckless and messy. Money is the first of four tracks released on Leto's 2014 EP, I Love You. In fact, it was the first original single that Leto released after a few of his remixes went viral. The song was a defining moment in Leto's career as a songwriter and producer. The cover art features a four-note motif representing the first four notes that are heard on the EP's title track, I Love You. This signature four-note motif is used again and again in each of the EP's four tracks with slight variations, which creates a sense of unity throughout the entire EP and is also hidden in all of Leto's works. At first listen, money sounds like a demon trying to escape from its chains. The song alternates between loud, flashy synths and a sort of ethereal state which has the listener wondering what direction the song will go next. Although the song is in 4-4, the melody often starts on a pickup to give the feeling a forward momentum and he uses heavy syncopation right before big drops. Repetition of single drum samples played in quick succession help to build tension throughout the song. Leto cleverly uses symbolic visual samples such as the ka of a cash register and the sound of coins falling to reference the song title. He also plays around with various video game type sounds and 8-bit sounds, particularly in the second half of the song such as the minor arpeggio at 315. The song features heavy percussion including a heavy sub bass, distorted kick, and a snappy snare. The drums are very wet with lots of reverb to give the song a messy quality. The result is an explosive rhythm section that becomes the main driver of the song. Leto also experiments with playful panning, particularly at the end, with a dragged out stereo delay on the word money. He chooses to create a very atmospheric environment by mixing the sounds directionally so that the listener feels surrounded by the sounds while highlighting accented beats and sound effects in the center of the mix. The song is so intricate, with many different parts and layers, that I see it as a perfectly designed puzzle. One of Leto's signature components is his creative use of vocal samples as both the melodic line as well as percussive foundation. The vocals are heavily processed to sound robotic and sharp to match the rhythm of the song. Repetition is one of the key aspects of this song. Motifs and rhythms are heard over and over again until the listener is literally drowning in sound. Oh my god, I need to take a sip of water. <sighs> Whew, okay. Leto plays sounds with effects processing brilliantly on the vocals from pitch shifts to delay throws. One of the things that he does extremely well in this song is the chopped vocals. The technique of using chopped vocals have been done many times before by artists such as Kaigo and Zed, but in my opinion, Leto does it best, mainly because of the placement and all the different variations that he uses. In many instances, the vocal is a guiding device of the song and propels the music forward in a perpetual state. I love and respect Leto a lot because he is not only a talented producer, but also a talented performer. In 2015, he performed all the songs on his EP I Love You, including Money, live with Cork, an orchestral symphony in Norway at Slida Jazz. In the performances, he plays piano and does an absolutely amazing job of transforming the electric work into a stunning orchestral masterpiece that sounds cinematic. He replaces pads with strings and drum machines with timpanis and bells. The way he explores the combination of traditional instruments with electronic music is inspirational and revolutionary. Leto's music doesn't exactly fit into any one genre and he is innovative in both his remixes and originals. Each one of his songs has its own distinct character, but they are all unified by Leto's signature bold and fearless sound. Whew. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I know it was super long, but I really hoped that it helped you guys write your essays. And I wish you all the best of luck if you're applying to NYU or any school for that matter. 
If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time!